thumbs up. Ladies and gentlemen, he's rolling out to the start of the Rod Shop Burnout Pad. He's kicking off the Burnout Masters today. Start the chant. It is Andrew Lynch. We want to hear it all the way through the crowd. Lynchy, 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 Lynchy. Come on, Andrew Lynch now, the wild man behind the wheel. Here it goes. Unleash the Corolla. What a way to kick off the burnout. Masters, your number one entrant there, Andrew Lynch. You can see why he's a crowd favourite anywhere he goes, skidding down under and around the world too. Lynchy, the absolute weapon, kicking off our burnout masters with incredible speed down the entry chute, tipping it in in the opposite direction to what most cars do to face the barrier, then straight down the exit chute, back up the entry chute, just off the start line. Expert use of the pad. He has set the benchmark here for the Burnout Masters final at the Summonats 35 Rod Shop Burnout Pad. He was my favourite yesterday, i got to say, in the qualifying. I'm very, very glad I am not a judge here. The next car to come out and grace us with his appearance here in the Rod Shop Burnout Pad for the Burnout Masters. He's going to follow in the footsteps of his father. He's already been a Summonats Burnout Masters champion back in Summonats 32. He's young. He's got all the enthusiasm and he's got the machinery behind him as well. His dad has won the most amount of burnout competitions here at Summonats. He's a legend of the sport. Next up, coming out, powered by a blown motorsport tune, small block Ford, screwed together by his dad himself, the Myers Muscle. He was your youngest burnout master ever in history so far. It is now Jake Myers coming to the burnout pad in this black Mustang. It's angry, it's Ford powered, and he's got a whole heap of fans here this weekend. Sicko! Tell him what you think of that effort. 
I love seeing those polished throttle plates just flicking the light across the Summonats crowd, but a great skid there from Sicko going shoot to shoot and really smart use of the pad there to make sure that that smoke cleared and visibility was good, but then making sure he used the deep bit of the rod shot burnout pad as well. A very intelligent and measured skid there from Jake Myers in Sicko. Another very important thing to remind people watching is you've got to go a minimum, minimum of one minute for the judging. So you go less than a minute, you can cop yourself a little bit of a penalty there as well. So sounded like he went the distance that time and you see the diff gears get changed you know, but look at the amount of smoke he's making up on the big screen that's an impressive car to watch and he jumps straight back in i think the idle starts to come down there because it's probably a little bit warm and he's thinking don't stop don't stop we've got to get this off the pad to maximize the points another black beauty now making its way to the burnout pad he was last year's summonats burnout champion it's got a whole heap of cubes on board. It's Big Block Chev. He wants to take the win in the Masters. It's probably the final thing for the mantelpiece when it comes to the burnouts. It is Stephen Loder now. Paul Cook alongside in UC Smoke. Just sitting here idling. Now we see it in gear time to light the back tyres up and send it into the burnout pad. Oh no, we can see the amber lick coming out the back. Yeah, we can see red flags out there, so it's not just an exhaust flame. I think the marshal will just be going out to just double check that everything is all right there with UC smoke, but at least the early part of that skid, very impressive volume of smoke and right up there in the revs as Steve Loder tipped it into the rod shop burnout pad. That's not the time to have it go wrong, is it? He has worked so hard to get here this weekend for the Burnout Masters. Summonats, give him some love. It's not what you want to see in that gorgeous black paint job on the back quarters there. For Stephen Loder, the powerhouse big block there is spewing out so much horsepower. It just get those tyres instantly smoking and hot. And unfortunately, in this nice sunny afternoon here in Canberra on the burnout pad, that has resulted in that flame. Yeah, hot, hot, hot on the rear of UC Smoke. And once they're lit, we find it's very hard to get them back out. You try and get that skid going again. And with something big power like UC Smoke, it's no surprise that it destroys those tyres. Oh, we might have to see as well here a reverse. So things really going wrong there for Steve Loder. He's not going to come back from that. We've got such an outstanding field of competitors today that you just cannot make a mistake <laughs> oh, like that. Cheer him on. He's backing up to start again, ladies and gentlemen. Watch with a huge tip in from UC Smoke. Make a whole heap of noise for Stephen Loder now. He's going to send it back into the burnout pad. Be collecting any points there towards the burnout masters title but he wanted to leave you with a show yeah you could see Stephen Loder going there well if I'm picking reverse I might as well use it I've already got the deduction I've already had the stoppage let's get back down the chute and make sure the crowd gets to see what a tip in is really like 
I tell you what, forget the replay you've seen here where he started. That was impressive. Take me back to the second time he did it because you can tell there's nothing left to lose now. Just send it in there. Give it every bit of RPM the powerhouse has put in those pistons. Let them move up and down as fast as they go and throw it back into the rod shot burnout pad. Coming up to the start line shortly, we have your Summonats 34 burnout master from last year. Can he be the first person since Summonats 31 to make it a back-to-back -back burnout master's title? No, oh, we'll have to wait and find out because he's just waiting patiently. And what a story it was last year. He made it into the burnout master's wild card. He then got elevated into the burnout master's qualifying. So he had to impress the judges once. Then he managed to make it into the Burnout Masters finals last year. So he's impressed them twice. And then he was lifted up by his peers as the Burnout Master of 2022 there from Summon Outs 34. So three times he had to be on the top of the sheet there when it came to the scoring. Can he make that happen here? Because he was super consistent a couple of months ago at Spring Nats. He's bought the car down here. Still coming off that win down there and he put a nice display on during the qualifying, made it into the top 10 yesterday, and now he's getting given the signal to come forward. We can hear it, it's noisy. It's Tim Brown now driving forward. The big Taverna Brothers sticker across the top. It's a small block Chev between the rails put together by BNR engines. And every time we see that sticker, we know it's going to make a whole heap of noise. The 871 about to throw a whole heap of air and methanol down the throat of this small boy chef. See you blow! gone on the back of CM Blow. <laughs> Raise your fingers in the air as he drives off. Can he go back to back? Timmy Brown, CM Blow. That was an outstanding effort, Dave. Look at the replay up on the big screen here as Tim Brown launches the Commodore down the entry chute. You can really see these high horsepower cars that you see up in the Burnout Masters and they can do both the fast tip-in and the instant smoke with volume of smoke. And Sam Blow was a great example of that. Just pumping the rod shot burnout pad. All right, our fifth car to come out in the Burnout Masters out of 15 next. Out of Western Australia, another BNR small block Chev combination in this gorgeous Tirana. He's wild. He's going to throw it in. It's Dwayne Palantine in Pepper. <laughs>
Dwayne Palantine there's decided to leave the pad. He didn't stop to say goodbye. Pepper it. Now, the word that came to mind for me then was staunch. That was a staunch <laughs> skid. <laughs> I think I'll... I'll uh, I'll echo that, that sympathy because look at him, he came out, put the foot down and no matter where he goes, he won up at Gaznats and Darwin, he won at Motivation last year, he just puts the foot down and tries to steer that thing around the pad. And another person that likes to do that are coming forward from South Australia. Sure, we got a couple of South Aussies in the in out there in the stand somewhere. He's been to the Burnout Masters before, he's been down in Red Centre Nats and got himself a win. It is John O'Kelly now from South Australia in the VK Commodore, the NASCAR Power, and it's going to go all the way past 9,000 RPM, that BNR 355. A wild one there from 355. All of the revs from that NASCAR donk and a great drive to match. Look, you can tell that the wind has started to come and make some noise for John O'Kelly. Little tribute there to the man. Chick Henry, Chick Henry Grandstand. Give him some love there. Yeah, this is for you. He's done so many summon hats and he loves coming back every time he can make it here. And he's just checking to see what's going on with the car. I mean, John O'Kelly, tough competitor, tough engine combination, and he's going to be tough to beat this weekend. What I'm really finding, though, is that the wind has stopped out there, and that makes it super hard for these burnout competitors because you get caught up in your own smoke. Yeah, look at it hanging around there, whereas the rest of the weekend, we've just had that really nice cross breeze that's help those cars, especially ones that produce that high volume of smoke that the judges are looking for, help them keep visibility on the pad. But there are other ways around that in terms of using different parts of the pad and really planning out where you're going to go. But sometimes the best bet is hold it flat and hold on. Oh. That was our sixth car in the 15 car lineup that we have here. For the Burnout Masters final, you were watching Street Machine Summon at 35 here on the Rod Shop Burnout Pad. Of course, if you want to be here next year, particularly if you want to be up in those nice shaded seats, the Chick Henry Grandstand, get online. The early bird tickets are out at the moment with a discount. And if you want a little hit of Burnout Power before then, get online for Rocky Nats in Easter long weekend, April 7th to 9. Michael Pratton making his way. Up to the start line right now in spastic. I love the artwork on this Commodore. The war speed sticker on the top of the window says it all now. It's a blown LS combination. Second at Brash Nats this year. And coming here with some form, he's back. Michael Pratt and Spastic.
Wow, how good was that from Michael Pratton in Spastic? I was particularly impressed with how much steering angle he carried with speed onto that entry shoot there to whip it around in front of the crowd before going back onto the pad. A really strong finals drive. Michael is going to be so happy with that outfit. He's going to think that Spastic should be back here every year at Summonance, and geez, I hope he does. We have got so much burnout action still to come to you here this afternoon at Summonance 35. One of my favourite cars will be making its way under the pad after Spastic departs. Britt and Brad Kilby. Eight more competitors to make their way into this cauldron, which is the Rod Shop burnout pad. It is warm this afternoon, despite the cool condition we've had. We are turning the temp up. The crowd is packed in here on a sold-out Sunday. And we are not disappointing with the level of burnouts we have seen so far from the Burnout Masters in 2023 at the Street Machine Summer Nats 35. And look at Michael Pratt in that time. So, so close to the barriers. And that's what you've got to do as a Burnout Master. You need to push to every little limit, every little bit of real estate here on the Burnout Pad. Make yourself known. You can see the fresh tyre marks as well. And the judges will be looking at that to try and deviate between all of them. We're going to take a short break and be back after this quick clean-up. My life is hot rods, designing them, building them, and racing. If you're into rods or customs, you'll know what I mean. It's all about passion, purity, and soul. Customs and hot rods like the SoCal Roadster is what we do. And insurance for cars like ours is what Shannon's do. Rods, customs, and even your daily drive. Call Shannon's on 134646. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts like us. You think that I'm running in place? Y'all really testing my face. Right before I blow up the spot, I had to get back to the base. What if my talent is wasted? It's sick, but I'm lacking the basement. Thoughts as I'm prepping the basement. What my come up is legend. Well, you can play the Burnout Masters game all you like, but nothing's like being trackside here to watch our Burnout Masters this year. And I tell you what, Brad's already had this car out in the championship. We don't know if he's going to get the number one. Britt last year was fourth in the Burnout Masters and secured her spot back. The chance to come again. Will she get one better? Of course, it is the 403 cubed LS now with the twin carbies on top. Hammer time, Britt Kilby. That was an outstanding burnout there from Hammer Time. I reckon hubby Brad will be as happy as she is. Britt absolutely hammering the rear tyres off Hammer Time. But giving it one last tip in to get to the centre of the pad and really lap up the love that the crowd has for this iconic car. Double entered. Always just doing lap after lap, tyre after tyre, faultlessly. So it's so good to see Hammer Time out here in the finals. Such a solid effort that may see Britt near the top of the standings. 
can she go one better than fourth position like she did last year in front of another great crowd? I don't know, Britt. She puts it all on the line. She's got that controlled style, doesn't she? Constant smoke from start to finish. And we're going to see something very, very different coming up next. You go from this controlled style of burnout to someone who just likes to mash that right foot down as hard as he can and just drive around the burnout pad fast, producing so much smoke because of the horsepower this car makes. He's from Western Australia. It's one of the two entries he's got into the Burnout Masters here right now. He loves it, it's his original. The OG now making its way to the Burnout Pad. The BNR small block between the chassis rails. He is gonna turn it up for this one. Chris Orchard now in the OG. And he's somewhere in that thick, thick red smoke. Here he is. The nose comes out of the Calais. Chris Orchard there. He's decided he's going to go back and uh, grab his second car to come out for a second run a little bit later on. The OG, though, doing him proud. He's not mucking around, is he? He actually has to get out of that vehicle and run back. Look, it's the game we play here, but I just want to know how close. There was so much smoke we couldn't tell, but the physics here, how close did he get and what happened there? There's a judge on that corner. Hopefully they know and they saw exactly what happened because that could be the difference between being on that top perch or maybe just getting a slight discount in the points. Up next, though, he's a wild man as well out from the Wagga Wagga region. He loves coming, loving seeing the Crint Riley racing on top as well. The war speed power plant in the front is making about 450 horsepower. He's been to Darwin there, got the national aspirator win. And wherever he goes, he seems to get the national aspirator win, but he's here in the Masters now. It's Billy Seaton in on tick. Dominads give it up for Billy Seaton. He came here on a wild card. He went through to the Masters qualifying and now here he is in the Masters final on tick. <laughs> I tell you what, he is trying. You think about all the cars you've seen with the huge blowers. He's brought a knife to a gunfight and he really has to impress with that driving ability there. You see him throw it around. Didn't quite get the full 360. Went back the other way but did not lift 
one bit from start to finish. Billy Seaton, he'll be hoping the Riverina Thrashers can take home some sort of trophy from this weekend. Next up, though, it is Rick Fuller making his way to the burnout pad from Victoria in this HX hold in Kingswood. It's a new build for him this year in the second half. He got third at Red Centre Nats, which got him an opportunity yesterday in the qualifying. It doesn't matter what he does. He's so skillful. It's the typical blown LS combination he's had in so many cars. Full on X. Anyone seen Rick Fuller? We've got, kind of lost him out there amongst all that smoke. Here he is. We can see him on the overhead camera now. Full on X. How impressive was that run back down the entry chute here where heaps of opposite lock and not quite touching or dragging, but just bringing the tail light of that HX down past the rod shot barriers and then whipping it into this beautiful little donut to go back out onto the pad. Great run there for Rick Fuller. There's a reason why he's a previous Summon that's Burnout Master. He's only got one car in it this year, but it's all he needs to get that number one spot once again. It was a couple of years ago where he did that back in LS1 and back in Summon that's 33. He'd be looking for fame again, but of course, we've still got a few cars lined up in this Burnout Masters. We extended it out to 15 cars. We have 11 cars run and done. Four competitors still to come. And the next one has been runner-up a couple of times now in the Burnout Masters. Last time at Summon at 34 and Summon at 33. But he's looking for the big number one, the huge trophy to take home today. He was halfway home when he got the phone call to say, you've made it. It's Steve Etzel now coming out in Skid Ute. but I am very, very glad that man threw a U-turn and came back to compete here in the Burnout Masters Finals at Summonats 35. Steve Edsel definitely still had a skid in him, as did Skid Ute, with an impressive speedy tip straight into the pad there and plenty of smoke. 
How tough does that ute look, Matty? Mate, there's a reason why he has been runner-up twice already in the Burnout Masters, because it is a tough engine combination. He is a very skilled driver, and he always smokes the entire pad out here at Summer Nats. And will he have done enough to make it to that top pier, I suppose? Stand on the top of the podium and get the big trophy. Next up, though, we've got a couple more cars to come in this 15-car field of Burnout Masters. And from the Wagga Wagga region up next, he won Red Senna in 2022. He's coming off a bit of form. He's got a fresh engine there from Jawar down there in Albury. He's put a fresh new engine combination in, and he's ready to let it rip today. It is Rob Cottrell now coming out in the LS-powered XD4 to Hayden. That was a burnout master worthy skid there. Yeah, even just seeing the mastery of Rob knowing, hey, I don't have much momentum here. Tyres are off. Let's get this off the pad and complete what was a solid skid. And Rob Cottrell, one of the other drivers here, had two cars entered and was so impressive in that fat Tony Fairlane. Managed to get four to haters through, and I'm so glad he did. One of my favourite drivers of the Burnout Masters comp this weekend. Great to see all of our officials running out there very quickly to clear the burnout pad at the moment because our masters, they throw tyres everywhere with the wheel speed they make. You see the big horsepower they bring here to the rod shop burnout. Great to see everybody in the grandstands on a sold out Sunday. And he's back now in his second car from Western Australia. It's the NASCAR powered VH Commodore. And how much do you think Brett Nidry is going to let him turn the wick up on this little Dodge small block? Let's find out. He's got a whole heap of wins down. Western Australia. He's getting G'd up by Matty James on the side. Chris Orchard now bringing the game to the Rod Shop Burnout Pad for the Burnout Masters Finals. Chris Orchard there, revving the crowd up. And how's the sound of that Dodge small block? 
Chris Orchard, though, I'm not sure if he's going to make it a 1-2 in the Masters here this weekend. He's had a few little uh, cuddles with the concrete, would we say, well, Matty? Well, I don't know. It's just so, so close, and I can't confirm nor deny, and that's what the judges are here for. Yeah. That's why they take all the pressure. They get paid the big bucks. But seeing how close it was, it could go either way, and that's the problem. From where we sit, it could go either way, but the judges are going to come up with a decision. That's why we've got all the camera angles. Yeah. They're spaced out around the burnout pattern, and it's going to be a little deduction like that. And, you know, five or ten points can take you from first all the way down to 15th in this 15-car field. And our final car, ladies and gentlemen, get on your feet. The final burnout master for Street Machine Summon has 35 on the Rod Shop burnout pad. He's another Western Australian competitor. Luckily, got his opportunity coming second at Burnout King in Western Australia a couple of years ago, and he's had a bit of a break trying to get over here from the west. Of course, it is this big red Commodore. Yes, it's familiar. BYE, blown LS power plan, and Justin's up in the stands. It is now Joel Snell in F and Fun. And the barbecue has been lit there in the exit chute. For Evan Fun, Joel Snell will pull up and our fire officials will get right onto that. But of course, being the final car out on the burnout pad, if it's safe to do so, if we put the flame out, who wants to see him finish the tyres off? I think that's a yes, Matty. We definitely want to see Joel Snell put this big Commodore through its paces, our last car here for the Street Machine. Summon at 35. It'd be sacrilege if we didn't have the final car go off on rims. Make a bit of noise, he comes by. <laughs> Give it up for Joel Snell. How is the blower wine on that BYE beast of an engine? The, the field we've had today, Lara, truly living up to the name Burnout Masters. I feel a little deflated because that was our last car. I want more. Yeah, you always want more when you come to Summon Outs. But now it's up to our judges. They have to go through that harsh deliberation. They have to look at all their scores, make sure they're happy, put them into the system, find out who's going to be on the top perch. Of course, we will be doing that down on the burnout pad in about 10 to 15 minutes, of course. We'll be going through all of our burnout winners. So you don't have to go anywhere if you want to find out who's going to be the burnout master of Summon Outs 35.